Hey everybody, how you doing? This is another installment of Mike's Country Vinyl and uh, hope you uh, watched the last video that we did and uh, got something out of it, got some information out of it. Anyway, my name is Mike Lemming. Uh, as I said in my previous video, uh, I've been in and out of the music business for over 40 years. I've been a concert promoter, I've owned record stores, on a recording studio, just about anything that you can think of uh, I've done within the industry. But uh, as I explained earlier, uh, my first love is country music. I do have an appreciation for all types of music, but my first love is country music. And today what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a special uh, video on country music songwriters who are not necessarily, who didn't get real famous as recording artists. And there's quite a few of them out there, but so I pulled a few albums out of my collection and uh, we're going to go over a, a few of them and, and uh, give you an idea of what songs they wrote and, uh, you know, what songs they made famous. First one is Carmel Taylor. And uh, this is actually an album, like again, like I was telling you yesterday, country music vinyl is, is very inexpensive to collect. And this one right here, again, I found this. Uh, sealed, still haven't opened it up, and uh, found it for three dollars and ninety nine cents. If you can imagine that. So, and what I do is when I open these up that have been sealed, I go in and I'll put a new sleeve uh, on the inside, and I'll put a, a new sleeve on the outside to, uh, you know, I'll play them one time, and <clears throat> then usually put them away. And unless I really fall in love with the album, then I'll, I'll uh, play it more than once. But anyway, Carmel Taylor. He, he, here's he, this guy's pretty impressive. He, here's people that he here's artists he's written songs for. Let's see: Loretta Lynn, La Costa, Barbara Mandrell, Jody Miller, Patty Page, Johnny Paycheck, Joe Stampley, Diana Trask, who was a lady from Australia. Matter of fact, we might even do a feature a feature on her. But Diana Trask uh, from uh, Australia, Conway Twitty. David Wills, and on and on. And this album right here actually spurred, I'm just looking at the billboard. I, I have one of these books here. Give me a lot of information right there. It's the uh, Cop Country Hits Billboard magazine that the late uh, Joel Whitburn put out. And uh, anyway, Carmel Taylor had two top 40 songs, Play the Saddest Song on the Jukebox, which is on this album, and I really had a ball last night, which is also on this album. So you're at least getting two hit songs on this album. But Carmel Taylor uh, did a lot of, uh, wrote a lot of great songs for people. And this album has a lot of great musicians on it. Pig Robbins on piano, Buddy Harmon on drums. Let's see what else. Uh, Pete Wade, acoustic guitar. Matter of fact, I just got through reading Pete Wade's uh, biography. Really a nice book. Ray Edenton, Bobby Thompson. And steel guitar, Hal Rugg and Pete Gray, harmonica, Charlie McCoy, fiddles, Johnny Gimble, Ernie Reed, and of course the Nashville Edition is doing backgrounds. And if you don't know who the Nashville Edition is, they used to sing on uh, Hee Haw. They were the background singers for Hee Haw. Next one we have is a guy by the name of Chip Taylor, right here. Another guy that wrote uh, a lot of songs. And I got another album. This right actually is this is a promo, white label promo, of an album called. Uh, it's actually Chip Taylor, uh, Taylor with uh, Ghost Train. And uh, anyway, there again, uh, it's really ironic on these albums. Uh, they really didn't have the only guy that I really recognize on here, as far as a musician is David Mansfield playing pedal steel fiddle and dobro and David Mansfield did a lot of uh, Christian music uh, for a lot of some of the labels Maranatha I think he did but anyway Chip Taylor had and I just pulled this up out of this book here he had one hit called Early Sunday Morning and I'm trying to think yeah it's on this album right here but uh, anyway What's ironic about this is he happens to be the brother of John Voight. And uh, so, anyway, Chip wrote a ton of, ton, of, ton of songs. Only had one hit, like I explained. 
and uh, he wrote, uh, If I Can't Be in Austin, which is a good song. Uh, let's see what else he did. If you're ever in Warsaw, coming from behind, if I can't be in Austin, they, they, those are some of the songs that he, that he wrote. So, anyway, Chip Taylor, good album. Like I said, again, you don't pay a whole lot for these albums, four bucks. And this is a promo. Uh, it's a radio station copy. So, I'm not, I'm not going to open it up. But anyway, you can tell that has a title strip on it. So, anyway, Chip Trailer, Taylor, John Voigt's uh, brother. So, this book is really a neat book. So if you come across it, they're fairly expensive to buy initially. I don't know what this book cost me initially, almost 30 bucks. Uh, but man, a lot of, a lot of information, a lot of information. This is, this goes up uh, 2006. So I don't know if they put anything out since then, but neat book. Here's one of our, my favorite songwriters of all time. He did have some hits. He wrote songs for Gladys Knight and the Pips. He wrote songs for uh, Bob Lubin, uh, Charlie Pride. But the guy that really fell in love with, with this guy's songs was, was Ray Price. Ray Price recorded, I think, probably three or four solid albums of songs by this gentleman right here. His name is Jim Weatherly. The guy used to be a I think he was a quarterback at Mississippi State, I believe. In Mississippi or Mississippi State. That's where he's from. But man, the amount. I've actually, right here, I've got three albums of his. Two of them are actually sealed. This one here. This is on uh, Buddha Records. And then he got, that was sort of a small label. And then he got uh, on RCA. I think, and then he was on ABC Records, which eventually became MCA. But I got to tell you, he put out so many songs. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that back in the day, Gladys Knight and the Pips, they had a big run of big hits. And almost all those hits they had were country songs written by this guy right here, Jim Weatherly. Midnight Train to Georgia was a song that uh, Gladys Knight and the Pips did. Uh, they also did... Uh, I'm trying to think what the other, the other one they did of his. Oh, well, I'm trying to think. But they, they did a couple of three of his songs. Uh, uh, but Where Do I Put a Memory? Charlie Pride did. Uh, but there was, I'm trying to think. The Need to Be, I think, Gladys Knight in the Pips recorded. Uh, quite a few of them. I bought this album for a buck. Great, great album, by the way. I mean, he Jim Weatherly was not the greatest singer in the world, but and he eventually wound up moving to Nashville, and actually did some. I think he did some writing with uh, with Vince Gill. But I'm looking up, and this album right here on RCA was record was produced by Jimmy Bowen. So uh, you know, it, it's uh, the little things. If you ever change your mind, was done by Ray Fry. Same old song and dance. Ray Price recorded Storms of Trouble Times was a big hit for Ray Price. Some Things Never Change. Just Enough to Make Me Stay was uh, uh, recorded by Bob Lubin. Uh, let's see, Bring Back My Sunshine. So this is this is a good album, but I, I got to tell you a story about Midnight Train to Georgia. Originally, it wasn't... That wasn't the title. The original title was Midnight Plane to Houston. And the song was actually written, he was very good friends with Lee Majors, who was a $6 million man, and uh, Farrah Fawcett. And so at the time, both of them were very extremely popular. Of course, Farrah Fawcett was with Charlie's Angels, and uh, uh, Lee Majors was doing the $6 million man. So they spent a lot of time apart and uh, Jim Weatherly could see that. And anyway, he wrote a song called Midnight Plane to Houston, just basically ex explaining for them, you know, just explaining, you know, how, many, how much they had to be apart. Well, Gladys Knight and the Pips, mainly Gladys Knight, heard this song and they said, hey, we want to record that, but we want to change it to Midnight Train to Georgia. 
And the reason they wanted to change it to, to midnight train to Georgia, number one, they were from Georgia. Number two, they spent a lot of time on trains and uh, they thought that would be more appropriate for them. So anyway, needless to say, song was crazy. It went crazy and uh, it was a huge hit. Another song that uh, come out that was a big country hit, it was called You're the Best Thing That Ever Happened to Me, it was a big number one hit for Ray Price. Well, the following year, after Ray hit number one on the country charts, following year, Gladys Knight and the Pips recorded it and made it a number one hit on the Billboard charts. I think it was an R&B and probably easy listening, but they changed it to the best thing that ever happened to me. So anyway, here's a guy that was just unreal for his songwriting, was amazing, but he had hits. Where do I put her memory? Where do I put her and it's, That was a Charlie Pride song. Like Old Times Again, Roses and Love Songs, both two big hits for for uh, Ray Price. So anyway, Jim Weatherly. You run across one of his albums? Buy it. Like I said, they're pretty cheap. Here's one. Sealed. Let me show it here. $2.99. So you get a lot of these things for cheap. I mean, there's not, you know, not much... Uh, not you don't have to pay a whole lot of money for for a lot of these country albums and a lot of people will recognize this this is gary stewart and dean dillon dean dillon last year was inducted into the country music hall of fame and of course dean dillon wrote oh my gosh he wrote song he's written so many songs well george Strait recorded so many of his songs it's amazing uh, and gary stewart stewart was not really known as a songwriter, wrote some great songs. Uh, there's one here called Brotherly Love, Honky Tonk Crazy. Um, but there again, um, Super Album by Dean Dillon and Gary Stewart. Good album. I don't even know what I paid for that. I'd probably, probably a little bit more expensive now. Here's another guy that uh his name is troy seals let me look up i, I gotta look at this book in this book here and see if he had anything that charted troy seals and a lot of these guys get get top 40 but they don't they don't uh no he never had one there's dan seals and brady seals who used to be with little texas but nothing that but troy seals uh the one that I remember that he wrote, and he, he wrote songs with uh, Donnie Fritz. Uh, let's see who else he wrote here. Will Jennings, who, Will Jennings, amazing songwriter. But anyway, the song on this album that really hit, and he wrote this with uh, Denny Price, is there's a, there's a honky-tonk angel who'll take me back in. Big hit for Conway Twitty. So again, uh, I may have paid a couple, three bucks for a sealed album of this. And what I'm going to probably be doing is probably going through a lot of these and opening them up, putting them uh, with, uh, put, with new sleeves and everything on them. But there again, good backing band. This isn't the neatest part about these guys is this is on Atlantic Records. These guys are such well-known songwriters and talented songwriters <clears throat> that they get good recording contracts and uh, then they put an amazing musicians behind them like here again Reggie Young, Ray Eddington, Chip Young, Troy Seals of course, <coughs> excuse me, Steel Guitar, Stu Bashore, Stu Bashore, I think that's how you pronounce his name. Lloyd Green and Weldon Myrick. Buddy Spiker, Johnny Gimble, Vassar Clements on piano, David Briggs on, I'm sorry, uh, on fiddle, David Briggs on piano. Charlie McCoy, a lot of people think of Charlie McCoy as being a harmonica player. He played organ on this. A lot of Larry London, Kenneth Buttry, Buddy Harmon. Amazing. But anyway, they have a little liner notes here. 
he wrote songs for Johnny Duncan, Waylon Jennings, Johnny Paycheck, Charlie Rich, Sammy Smith, Kenny Price, Dobie Gray, and a multitude of other singers. Wow. Amazing. And we got another one here, a guy that's... Uh, I'll look this guy up. And here again, sealed album, man. A buck. A buck. And this, I remember the football card. It was sort of like a funny song that come out. Glenn Sutton, he, you know, Glenn wrote songs, but he also, I think he did some producing too. But here again, Jimmy Capps, Buddy Harmon, Jerry Kennedy, Joe Osborne, Pig Robbins, Bobby Thompson, Pete Wade. Great musicians. Let's let's test, take a look and see if Glenn Sutton had anything on the charts. I guess I should have known. Should I probably reference this before I did the video? But hey, you know, even though I've been in the business and even though I have a huge collection, I don't know everything. I love finding out new things about different artists and everything. I love it. You know, and there's so much good country music. I mean, all music. There's a lot of undiscovered music out there, but particularly in, in, in country music. Let's see. Come on. Glenn Sutton. Come on, Glenn. You're in here. Uh, Glenn Sutton. No, Glenn did not have any top 40 hits. But... I do remember the football card, and uh, he wrote a lot of songs. Glenn, I think Billy Sherrill, yeah, Billy Sherrill had a hand in producing this, but the football card, he wrote all these songs on this album here. Uh, so anyway, good one. Football card, I guess, probably is worth the whole album, I mean, for a buck. I mean, a close encounters of the Sutton kind, so... And here's this next songwriter is near and dear to my heart. He had a few hits, and but I got to meet him on a number of occasions, and just a neat guy, funny guy. I mean, so funny he almost got me in trouble with my wife, but I won't get into that. But <laughs> Red Simpson, uh, Red, and. An amazing songwriter. Matter of fact, Bob Dylan called him the Bard of Bakersfield. Uh, he wrote so many great songs, and of course, he he was part of the influx of the Bakersfield sound. He wrote songs for Merle. He wrote songs for Buck. He wrote, he, you know, he had some hits himself. And but you know, it's just. I, like I said, I grew up in Bakersfield. I watched the Cousin Herb show and Jimmy Thomason show and uh, Dave Stogner and everything that they had on TV in, in Bakersfield. That was my initial education on music. But uh, I did get to meet Red a number of times. Nice guy. Uh, you know, I had him sign a few things for me. Some uh, 45s and he... He gave me his phone number. I still have his phone number and said, hey, you know, if you want any more of this stuff, he said, I got a bunch of it and I'll give it to you. I mean, but he, just a funny guy, just a funny guy. But here's one of Bakersfield Dozen. And here's one, I Fell in Love With You. is a song on there uh, written by him and Buck. Party Girl, which I like. I like that song. George for a Day. If you grew up in Bakersfield, there was a TV personality, and I can't, I think it was on the ABC network. It was, uh, gosh, was it KL, KLYD, I think it was, TV. And there's a guy on there, his name was George Day, and he was a TV personality. And he took a, this is the play for words, George for a Day. Uh, Genie with a light brown Cadillac, he wrote with uh, Buck Owens. And then uh, Mini Skirt Mini. It was a it was a hit for him. Uh, it's funny. There was a guy out of Bakersfield. And we'll have to do something on, the, on Bakersfield. But his, his guy uh, in Bakersfield that actually played around Bakersfield for a long time 
and he developed into a really good songwriter uh, and move, wound up moving down to to LA. Uh, but anyway, here's a song that uh, this guy wrote, There Ain't Nothing Happening to Me, and, and the guy's name is Cliff Crawford. And I tell you, his name is misspelled so much. On the back of here, it's misspelled. His last name was Crawford, but it's C-R-O... F-F-O-R-D, Crawford. It's misspelled. It's spelled the, the traditional way of C-R-A-W-F-O-R-D. So it's, uh, that's interesting to see. I never saw that before. See, I'm learning lots of stuff here that I didn't know. But anyway, great one. Of course, Red Simpson is uh, known for his truck driving songs. When truck driving songs were going big, you know, he, uh, he did a lot of truck driving songs. And this is, uh, that's really ironic is uh, this album. I actually bought a radio, some radio station copies in Ridgecrest and it just had, so happened to belong to a guy that I knew who was a drummer in Bakersfield, Don McNatt. But anyway, it's uh, Tombstone Every Mile was a hit for Dick Curlis, Truck Driving Fool, uh, Diesel Smoke, Dangerous Curves. So a lot, this is his truck driving album here. Uh, here's an, here's one here that this is his biggest hit. I'm a truck right there. And on this album, he, uh, I'm a truck. Of course he did truck driving man, a song that uh, was written by Terry fell and actually a guy from Bakersfield, a big part of the Bakersfield sound, Bill Woods recorded that, that song a lot of time, a lot. Roll truck roll, uh, Tommy Collins. Great, great, great. Uh, this one right here looks like this is, uh, yeah, this is pretty much this is, has Highway Patrol on there that was written by Dennis Payne and, and Red. But anyway, this is a good album here, too. A lot of truck driving songs on this one. So, anyway, but Red Simpson wrote so many songs. Oh man, I just the last concert that I promoted was was uh, Marty Stewart and a friend of mine, uh, Teresa Spanky from Bakersfield brought, actually she didn't bring him over, she invited him to come over and then a friend of his brought him over. And he come backstage and Marty stood there and he said, man, you gotta show me how, how you courted this one song. You know, I've always wanted to know how to do it. And then he's sitting there and Red's doing it. What a, what a memory, what a memory. And he was just, Red's so respected uh, as a songwriter and Gosh, just uh, put out such an, an amazing amount of songs that Buck and Merle and other people, Candy Staten actually recorded one of his songs. Uh, wow. And so, you know, it's just, uh, you know, if you get a chance to buy his stuff, I mean, it's not expensive. This stuff is not expensive to get. You know, I bought this one for like six ninety nine. dollars uh, You'll pay a little bit more for that stuff if you bought, you know, I found, I think I bought that one in Bakersfield. But... Red was uh, quite a quite a guy. Another guy that uh, an amazing songwriter had an output. I mean, when I start naming off some songs here, you know, who, who you don't realize how many songs he did write and how many big hits he had. Curly Putnam, and there again, there's another one of my albums that I did pay a little bit more for this. This is like seven bucks, but it's still sealed. Uh, first song I'm gonna tell you about, and and this is a big hit for. Uh, Porter Wagner, he was a big hit for Tom Jones, of all people, called Green, Green Grass of Home. Uh, and that song in itself probably made him quite a bit of money. And he, had, he wrote another song called My Elusive Dreams that was a big hit for David Houston and uh, Tammy Wynette. So this is a good album. Let's just, for the heck of it, let's look and see if Curly had any hits. Because... I don't remember him having, well, he, had, he wrote hits, but he didn't. Yeah, he had one, the prison song, and that was on a real, this, wow, from 1960, on a label called Cherokee. So he only had one hit, and it was a no, hit number 23. It only stayed on the charts for like a, a, a week. But uh, anyway, it's uh, Green Green Grass, A Home. 
He also had this one song here, Set Me Free, that was recorded on an album by Ray Price. Now here's one. Here's a songwriter. This guy is in the Songwriters Hall of Fame. Now I told you that I, I live on the central coast uh, of California. Well, most people don't even know who this guy is. And he, he grew up on the central coast. He was born in Antlers, Oklahoma. He's an Oklahoma boy, but his family moved to the central coast in the Orchid, Santa Maria area. And his real name is Kenneth Gist. His dad was in the music business. He did a lot of booking and everything. Kenneth Gist Sr. His, his name was Kenneth Gist Jr. And um, anyway, he passed away a few years, a few years back. But this guy wrote some amazing songs. The first song, well, first song he, he I remember him from because I bought an album that was on a label called Vegas. Uh, and he had a hit called, uh, gosh, what was the name of it? You just gotta be one. Beautiful people, most beautiful people in the world. And anyway, he wrote, that's the first time I heard him, but then he moved to Nashville and he had some huge hits. Probably you remember a song called Behind Closed Doors. Charlie Rich had a big hit. He also had another big hit with, uh, I Take It On Home. Um, uh, so, wow, just, and he had uh, Soulful Woman, he had a hit himself, and I think this song, this album is called Let's Shake Hands and Come Out Loving. If you, this is a promo, and if you, if, if you find his stuff, now he had, I think, I think Kenny had some hits, let's just check, you know. I'm trying to keep these vi uh, videos down to around 30 minutes, but you know, I get to talk and then lose track of time. So I hope you enjoy it because I try to be as in, in informable or informing as possible. Odell. Kenny Odell. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah. Soulful Woman hit 18. My Honky Tonk Ways hit number 37. Let's Shake Hands and Come Out Loving, which is the name of this album, hit number 9. So he had a top 10 song. As long as I can wake up in your arms and Medicine Woman. Now, what's unique about this, now I, I used to have another one of his albums that was on a different label, but this was on Capricorn Records. And if you know Capricorn, Allen Brothers was on Capricorn, and a lot of the Southern Rock stuff was on Capricorn. So it was, it, I found it very interesting that uh, he was on uh, Capricorn. But it, this album, again, has Reggie Young, Buddy Emmons on pedal steel and my favorite pedal steel player of all time. Tommy Alsa, six string bass guitar, Bobby Woods keyboards, Ray Eddington, they misspelled his name. <laughs> and then Kenny O'Dell. Anyway, so this is a, actually a pretty good album. I've, I've played this album before. Kenny O'Dell, great songwriter and great artist. All right, here we go. Hope we're not boring here. Red Lane, right there. This guy, very underrated. Again, paid five bucks for this. Sealed. Got to open it up. I can see two songs on here right now that were hits. Number one, The World Needs a Melody. Uh, him and Larry Henley, Johnny Slate wrote the, co wrote the song. Another one, It Always Rains on Tuesday, the great Hank Cochran in Red Lane. Matter of fact, we got Hank Cochran, we'll be going over. Uh, mm -hmm. And another one called Mississippi Woman. And that was a hit for Waylon. The reflections of the trees are cut by the bow of my Piro and spattered by the paddle of my eager hand. What, what lyrics, amazing, huh? But anyway, uh, I'm trying to think, this album, yeah, 1971 when this album came out. Red Lane, just for the heck of it. Let's just see. Let's just see. I'm gonna have to cut this off, all right? You guys are, this is gonna be way too long. 
way too long. Red lane. I want to get to, uh, I may have to do a two-parter of this. Red lane. Yep, he had the world needs a melody. I thought I remember that. Hit number 32 on the charts and stayed there for five weeks. Okay. Let's go. Let's go through. Let's do one more. And then what we'll do is we'll do another video and finish it up here. Because I these other guys that I want to go over uh, will be of very much interest and actually has uh, a connection, a pretty good connection uh, to me. Anyway, Wayne Kent. I actually like this guy singing. And a really good singer. Uh, he had uh, some hits. And then we'll do one more. Let's look for Wayne. Wayne Kemp. Wayne, where are you? Wayne Kemp. Had a hit with Honky Tonk Wine, hit number 17. Another hit with Listen, and then your wife is cheating on us again. Uh, hit 35. So he had one top 20 song. Kentucky Sunshine. Okay. I had a talk with the man, darling. She'll love you to pieces. Here we go again. The song that he had a hit with is a song that he didn't write. It's called Honky Tonk Wine. Um, and did another one called Burn Another Honky Tonk Down. But, uh, gosh, you know, he, he uh, it's from Muldrow, Oklahoma. And uh, I know that uh, Conway Twitty did some of his songs. Uh, he had, uh, I think who else he did, but, uh, there again, another good album. Anyway, hey, thanks for hanging there with me. I didn't realize it was going to take this long. I'm going to do another part, song, songwriters, not make it quite as long. Remember, please, uh, if you like this video, please hit like, and, um, just, uh, help me out there. If you, you know, makes, if you want to comment on it, great. I, I appreciate that. And I'm hoping you're really enjoying this and because we're really enjoying doing it. And uh, just keep tuning in. We're going to do one or two videos a week. Uh, I'm going to try to do another one. See, today's Thursday. I'll probably do another one on Monday or Tuesday and post it up on my page. So anyway, hey, thank you so much. Remember, this is uh, Mike's Country Vinyl. I'm Mike Lemming. And hit like and make a comment. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. i got to find my clicker. Where's my clicker at? My clicker. I lost my clicker. Oh well, that's the way it goes.